Hello, ladies and gentlemen. What we're looking at here is lesson eight. I want to finish this off. Um, it's displacement velocity and acceleration. The first couple of pages you can read over and uh, it should make sense. We discussed it in class in detail. This was our very first example. We had a displacement function, a position function, and uh, we were able to determine its displacement at four seconds. We were able to determine the average velocity during the fourth second. So remember that was between when we count from three to four. So zero to one is your first second, one to two is your second, two to three is your third, three to four is your fourth second. So we had to do the average uh, rate of change of velocity. So it's S of four minus S of three over top of the time interval, which is delta T, which was one. That gave us negative 11 meters per second. The velocity at the four sec fourth second, so that's instantaneous, so we're looking at the limit as delta t approaches zero of delta d over delta t, and that worked out to be negative 12 meters per second. When is the particle at rest? When the velocity equals zero, so that's the derivative of the position function. So the derivative of the position function equals velocity, so we take its derivative and set it equal to zero, which gave us t squared minus 8t plus 12, common factor of the 3, factor the trinomial, and we get two values of t where the velocity equals 0. And finally, the velocity when the acceleration is 0, well, the second derivative of the displacement is acceleration, or it could be the derivative of the velocity. In either case, we're taking the second derivative here, we come up with 6t minus 24, we set that equal to zero, we come up with t equals four. We're interested in the velocity when t equals four, which is the first derivative of the displacement of the um, particle, which is going to equal negative 12 meters per second. That was example one. Moving on to example two. We have a toy rocket, okay? We have a toy rocket that's fired into the air. It ascends in a straight path and then falls to the ground. So your rocket is basically going up. When it leaves the ground, it has a certain velocity. It's slowing down, slowing down, slowing down until it hits zero, and then it falls back down to the ground. Now, when we look at that sort of motion in a height versus time graph, that motion, as time moves on, so as this is time, in the first second, it might be that high. In the second second, it might be that high. Third second, that high. Fourth second. And it actually is going to look parabolic over time, even though the rocket itself is going straight up and straight down. But when we graph height versus time, we still get this parabolic curve. Okay, so what we've got here is what is the rocket's initial velocity? Well, the rocket's initial um, height off the ground is given by this, s of t. So its velocity is going to be its derivative. So in this case, it'll be 32 minus 8t. And its initial velocity will be when t equals 0. And so what we come up with, s prime of 0 equals 32 minus 8 times 0, 32 meters per second. So as soon as the rocket starts going, it's moving at 32 meters per second. Okay, so what's the maximum height obtained by the rocket? Well, as we said, this rocket's going to start off going pretty fast, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, finally stop, turn around, and fall all the way back down to Earth. Remember, it's a toy rocket, and we're not making orbit here. So its maximum height is going to occur when its velocity is equal to zero, right here, right when it stops, it's at its top. So we're going to set the first derivative equal to zero, which is 32 minus 8t equals zero, which is t equals four. So after four seconds, we're going to hit our maximum height. Now, if you think about what's happening, four seconds, we're going to hit our maximum height of, I wonder what that'll be. Well, 
the maximum height attained by the rocket when t equals 4 will be s of 4. So then that'll be 32 times 4 minus 4, 4 squared. So what we're going to have here is 32 times 4, which is 64, 128. 16 times 4 is 32, 64. So the maximum height is going to be 64 meters. And that's going to be right here. We're looking a little bit like grade 10. You've got your uh, vertex here. Okay, but we're going to continue to solve the same question using calculus. The total flight time using grade 10, you know that it was going to fall. If it takes four seconds to get to a max, it's going to take eight seconds. It's going to take four more seconds to come back down. Or we can say to ourselves, when will its displacement be equal to zero? In which case, you'd take 32t minus 4t squared equals zero. We're going to common factor out of 4t. We're going to be left with 8 minus t equals 0, and t will equal 0, well, sorry, this whole thing will equal 0, s of t will equal 0 when t equals 0, or t equals 8, which means that it will be on the ground, or its displacement from wherever it's being fired is going to be at the very beginning and at the very end. What is the velocity when the rocket's going to hit the ground? Well, that's going to be, it's going to have the velocity when t equals 8. That's the total flight time. So it's hitting the ground at time equals 8. So its velocity at 8 is what we're interested in, which is going to be 32 minus 8 times 8, which is going to be negative 32 meters per second. So that's the velocity that the rocket will hit the ground at. Okay, so that's example 2. Let's take a look at example 3 now. Example 3 has a position of a particle. It's given by this equation, where t is greater than or equal to 0, where s is measured in meters and t is in seconds. Determine the velocity when the acceleration of the particle is 1 meter per second squared. So the position is given by negative 4t over t plus 1. They would like to know the velocity when the acceleration is equal to 1. So I need to find the acceleration in terms of t. Well, its velocity is its first derivative, so it's going to be the derivative of the top times the bottom. Subtract the derivative of the bottom times the top, all over the bottom squared. We're going to simplify that. And that's going to be negative 4 over t plus 1 squared. That's the velocity. So now I'm going to want the second derivative. The second derivative of the displacement is actually equal to the first derivative of the velocity, which is actually equal to the acceleration. Now when I go to do that, I'm going to look at this differently. I'm not going to look at it as a quotient. I'm going to think about it as a constant. That's how I'm going to think about it to take its second derivative. We talked about this in class the other day. So that derivative is going to be negative 4 times negative 2 t plus 1 to the negative 3 times 1. So it's going to be 8 over t plus 1 cubed. So that is the acceleration at any time t the question is asking us for the velocity when the acceleration equals 1. So you're going to set a of t equal to 1. So you're going to get 8 over t plus 1 cubed equals 1. We need to solve that for t now. Cross multiplying is probably the easiest thing to do here. 8 equals t plus 1 cubed. We're going to cube root both sides, which is going to be 2 equals t plus 1. And we're going to take the 1 over, so it's going to be t equals 1. So the time when the acceleration is 1 meter per second is 1 second. So its velocity 
at t equals 1. We've got to go back and look at the velocity. That's the formula for velocity. It's going to be negative 4 over 1 plus 1 squared, and it's going to be negative 1 meters per second. So a lot of ones there. Might have been a better example if I had some other numbers coming out, but what we've determined is that the velocity, when the acceleration equals one meter per second squared, we determine the formula for the acceleration. We set it equal to one meter per second squared, sorry. And so we set that and we came up with time was gonna be one second. We take that one second, put it in the velocity, and we get negative one meters per second. Here's your homework. So you can finish off, please, all of the work that you need to for higher order derivatives, all of the work that you need for the applications of derivatives. You can take a look at the posted resources that your students are coming up with for derivatives. You can make sure that you post a brief description of an online resource, why you think it's valuable, and the link. And I will be seeing you on Wednesday. Remember, I'm still thinking about a test coming up, and I'm very much favoring uh, probably Thursday or Friday, one of the two. So keep on your game. Make sure you keep up with your homework, and we'll see you soon. If you have any questions, you can post them to the LMS, and I'll make sure that I monitor any communications going on there.